In this world, is the destiny of mankind controlled by some transcendental entity or law? Is it like the hand of God hovering above? At least it is true that man has no control, even over his own will. drop of your blood is ours. Yes, Femto. Let the blood of those you once cherished be your fuel, for you will rise as our chosen king. If it be reason that destiny transcends human intellect and makes playthings of children, it is cause and effect that a child bear his evil and confront destiny. Embrace your inner evil and face your future. You have but one thing left to do. You must learn engineering, for engineering is the ultimate vehicle of causality. In order to achieve your full ascension into godhood, you must learn. Listen to my words as I explain capacitors. A capacitor is an electronic device that stores electrical energy in an electric field by accumulating electric charges on two closely spaced surfaces that are insulated from each other. It is a passive electronic component with two terminals. The effect of a capacitor is known as capacitance. While some capacitance exists between any two electrical conductors in proximity in a circuit, a capacitor is a component designed to add capacitance to a circuit. To make a simple comparison, a capacitor is similar to a battery. However, a capacitor stores an electric charge. A capacitor cannot store nearly as much energy as a battery. However, they can charge and release energy much faster as a result. The other key difference is how the energy itself is stored. A capacitor, when charged, creates an electromagnetic field that has an effect on the surrounding circuit, while a battery stores potential chemical energy that is later released as electrical energy. So a capacitor stores a charge. When a capacitor is disconnected from a source of voltage, the charge will then dissipate. Consider the following analogy to help you understand. Say we have water flowing from a pipe into a tank. At the bottom of that tank is another pipe. As water flows into the tank, it fills up. Similarly, when voltage is supplied to a capacitor, it will charge. When the tank is full, water will still flow to the system at a normal rate. When we turn off the supply, the rest of the system will still receive water until the tank fully drains. Similarly, when a capacitor is fully charged and the voltage supply is removed, the rest of the circuit will still be supplied power until the capacitor drains. Compare the capacitor charging to your inner evil growing more and more. Now to explain the principles of capacitance, it is the capability of a material object or device to store electric charge. It is measured by the charge in response to a difference in electric potential expressed as the ratio of those quantities. The SI unit of capacitance is the farad, symbol F, named after the English physicist Michael Faraday. A one farad capacitor, when charged with one coulomb of electrical charge, has a potential difference of one volt between its plates. The reciprocal of capacitance is called elastance, the capacitance C of a capacitor is defined as the ratio of the maximum charge Q that can be stored in a capacitor to the applied voltage V across its plates. In other words, capacitance is the largest amount of charge per volt that can be stored on the device. Let's consider this example. Our charge stored is 48 microcoulombs. Our voltage across the capacitor is 12 volts, so using our formula, Capacitance is four microfarads. Don't make the assumption that this is the only math required for your understanding. 
There is so much more you need to understand before your transformation is complete. Now, I must briefly backtrack a bit to define the most common capacitor, a parallel plate capacitor. The parallel plate capacitor has two identical conducting plates, each having a surface area, A, separated by a distance, D. When a voltage, V, is applied to the capacitor, it stores a charge, Q, as shown. We can see how its capacitance may depend on A and D by considering Coulomb characteristics. The space between the plates, which we have defined as D, may simply be a vacuum, and in that case, a capacitor is then known as a vacuum capacitor. However, the space is usually filled with an insulating material known as a dielectric, which is the case for our parallel plate capacitor. I will very quickly explain a dielectric. It is an electrical insulator that can be polarized by an applied electric field. When a dielectric material is placed in an electric field, electric charges do not flow through the material as they do in an electrical conductor. To put it simply, the dielectric prevents what humans see as the flow of current, and thus allows the capacitor to build up its potential difference. Once that potential difference is charged, the capacitor can act similarly to a battery. When battery terminals are connected to an initially uncharged capacitor, the battery potential moves a small amount of charge of magnitude Q from the positive plate to the negative plate. The capacitor remains neutral overall, but with charges plus Q and minus Q residing on opposite plates. Now that you have a more solid grasp of the concepts, we will explore the formula derivations. This will be your symphony of evil. Now think back to the parallel plate capacitor. We know that like charges repel, unlike charges attract, and the force between charges decreases with distance. So it seems quite reasonable that the bigger the plates are, the more charge they can store, because the charges can spread out more. Thus, the capacitance C should be greater for larger area A. Similarly, the closer the plates are together, the greater the attraction of the opposite charges on them. So C should be greater for smaller distance D. It can be shown that for a parallel plate capacitor, there are only two factors, A and D, that affect its capacitance C. The capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor in equation form is as follows. C equals epsilon naught times area over distance. The constant epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space. Its numerical value in SI units is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 farads over meters. The small numerical value of epsilon naught is related to the large size of the farad. Let's consider this example. Capacitance and charge, stored in a parallel plate capacitor. Now for this problem, we are going to assume the dielectric is a perfect vacuum. What is the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor with metal plates? Each of area 1.0 meters squared, separated by one millimeter. Next, what charge is stored in this capacitor if a voltage of three times 10 to the power of three volts is applied to it? First, we calculate the capacitance. We were given the area and distance so we simply have to just plug into our formula. Since the dielectric is a perfect vacuum, we can simply use epsilon naught. Take note on how the units cancel out to leave us with our final answer of 8.85 nanofarads. Next, we calculate the charge when we supply a voltage. Using the formula Q equals V times C, we get a fairly easy problem to solve. When we plug in our previously calculated capacitance with our voltage, we get 26.6 microcoulombs across our capacitor. In cases where the dielectric is not a perfect vacuum, we add dielectric constant K to the capacitance formula. K represents a constant to multiply epsilon naught with in order to achieve the true dielectric value for any non-vacuum medium. This table demonstrates the different constants K for the different dielectric materials. 
In most cases, the dielectric will be air, which essentially has the constant K equal to 1. As those you once cherished bleed, the wheels of causality spins. When you are reborn, you will be our chosen king, our divine engineer. For the crafter of fate must have the ability to engineer the, the future. To conclude your transformation, capacitors have many functions and uses. Understanding the core concept is only the first part. For capacitors can be used for energy storage, filtering, and power factor correction to name a few. What's that? The very last tear you shed. Our newest kinsmen, our wing of darkness. Arise, Vento.